Wild Van Aert, of course, has proven so many people how good he actually is. In Paris-Nice last week, of course, he won a time trial. He almost won sprints against Mass Pillars. And then, of course, on the final stage, absolutely a pivotal component for Primoz Roglic sealing the overall and not repeating what he did in 2021. So, yeah, the question here is, is Wout Van Aert the best all-rounder we have right now? And have had for a long time. Oh yeah, because when we look at his results in the Tour de France last year, he won a time trial against Pogacar of all people, and a lot of other great time trialists, and a flat stage as well against some of the best sprinters in the world. And of course, he won, quite frankly, one of my favourite stage races I've seen in a while in the Tour de France, and that was up the Mont Ventoux. too. I did not expect him to do that, and I was quite shocked. But it was pretty much clear after that Tour de France, he is an amazing all-rounder and the greatest all-rounder we've probably seen since Bernard Hinault, who actually did that many, many years ago himself. So, yeah, we've not seen a talent like this in a very long time. I mean, yeah, and you would say cycling's changed so much as well. It's become so much spe more specialised than it was back in the 80s, 70s, whatever. So, yeah, it's really phenomenal to see a guy doing it. And, like, bringing it back to, like, Torino Adriatico last year, where he, he again, beat the sprinters on the opening stage. He well, uh, he outclimbed some of the best climbers on Pranto de Tivo. And then he managed to beat Filippo Ghana in the time trial as well. So, up there with the best of them in every category. And, of course, we know his pedigree in, in the classics. He's won... Milan San Remo, and he's won Game Weather Game. He's won Omlut as well. So in Imola, he was second in the road race and second in the time trial. And in Flanders, he was second as well to Ghana. So it's like, yeah, do you think this guy is going to end up uh, competing in a, well, a Grand Tour leadership in uh, Tour de France or a Welta or a Giro? I could see that. And I really would love that to happen because I think it could work. But for me, you've got Roglic still there really so until he starts fading they'll just say like well Roglic will just pass the you know pass the torch on to him then really when it time for him to move on because he's going he is going on a bit but he's still in great form though so it's not time yet for Wout Van Aert to take the mantle as you know a GC leader for uh, Jumbo Visma but I'd definitely love to see that but we'll have to wait and see yeah he has been uh kind of in the shadows we've been talking about yeah like even saying that he can t challenge for the green jersey he, um he's shown that he can out, as you said out sprint the best people in the sprints in the tour de france and we have speculated whether he will potentially go for the points jersey but yeah the climbing ability it's it's crazy when you look at it and uh, yeah, he's of course one meter ninety, uh, not the best height to be if you're a GC rider. Seventy eight kilograms, um, which is still quite light for for a man of his stature. But uh, I, the rider I can only think of that would be that kind of height and uh, have won uh, Tour de France would potentially be Andy Schleck. But he was one meter eighty six, but weighed. 68 kilograms, Bradley Wiggins, of course. A bit of a different rider. I wouldn't see Bradley Wiggins winning many sprints against Mark Cavendish, for instance. But he was uh, 1 meter 89 and 76 kilograms. So only 2 kilograms lighter than what we're not. And don't forget Chris Froome was... True. 1.88 or 89, I believe. I can't remember, but he is quite a tall person. And he was the, the lightest of, the, of them all, as you could tell when you see him, you know, back during his prime when he was a four-time Tour de France winner. But that's neither here or there these days. But, yeah, I mean, the big question is the big mountains. Uh, well, we're not, of course, Pranto de Tivo is an amazing climb, but it's not three weeks worth of enduring pain or whatever. And it's the recovery that's the most important thing. He's only been in the Tour de France, and quite impressively, He's, well, the first one in 2019, he didn't finish, but he still won a stage, or at least won a stage. And in 2020, finished 20th overall, which is incredible when you're working for someone else. 
and then 19th last year again working for someone else uh well he did all kinds of things last year of course the as you mentioned the time trial the moment two and so forth so yeah do you think well if we say okay if he is gonna challenge for gc Jonas Vingo has decided to say the tour or whatever. Which of the three tours do you think suits a Wout Van Aert better? Is it the Giro? Is it the Welter? Or is it the Tour de France itself? Mm, good question. I mean, you could argue the Welter is probably the most, you know, the one with the most elevation. So it would be challenging climbing wise. That might be good for him because he is an, a, an, a great climber without doubt, especially for a man his size. Giro does have its fair share of, you know, climbs that would challenge him. So it's very difficult, but maybe off the top of the bat, thinking about it, I would think maybe the Welter, they probably would give him, uh, I would probably see them giving him a Welter um, responsibility at the start, you know, because then they'll probably think, well, you're ready for GC now. So we'll give you the GC leadership, but we'll start you off in the Welter. Okay, no pressure. We'll just see what we got and then go from there. That's how I could probably see him being a GC leader, just starting off with something that they probably think, you know, the least, you know, they're probably aiming more for Tor, really, because they aim high. So they want to aim for the most prestigious. So Tor first, Giro second, but not worry too much about the Welter. So we might just put you there and, as an experiment, really, and see what we got. That's how I see it, really. Well, yeah, that's a very interesting take. And we'll see in the years to come if that is what happens. But anyways, that's it for this clip. Make sure to subscribe here to the Cycling Dane Extra and check out all our good stuff on the main channel.